and here he is, the liberator of both Dolma and El Amigo in the flesh. I'm Lena Murila, correspondent for The Raven. You might recognize me from my expose on the secret lives of the homunculi. But enough small talk. It's not for nothing that I've been standing here since yesterday morning on the off chance that you might pass by. Uh, meow? No, I'm here because, well, actually, it's best that you hear it from Alma. I'm just an observer. Hey, Alma, you fucking whore! I found him! <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Is this the adventurer of whom you spoke? Yeah, it fucking is. Please, I beg of you, find my father, Obi Wan. You're his only hope. Oh, fuck, wrong movie. But, please, I need your help. Oh, gosh. Crying noises. Hey, yeah, uh, it's all right, Alma. Eh, shit. Listen, we're attracting unwanted attention. Might I suggest a change of venue? We'll await you before the Prima Vista. The theater barge has a berth at the airship landing. Yeah. Come on, Alma. Stop having a fucking whinge. Oh, gosh, you're right. Makes everyone hate me. Anyway, I'm leaving. Hmm. Arms folded. And then we stand here in silence. Holy shit. It's pretty big. Hey, uh, you can keep that dirk in your drawers. No one here is a member of the Imperial Army, nor are there any spies within the troop. At least, uh, no known spies. <gasps> Ask anyone, and they'll readily attest. The majestic Imperial Theatre Company are the finest practitioners of the dramatic arts to be found anywhere on the three great continents. And beyond! They have admirers throughout the Empire and its territories, even boasting a sizable following in Gridania, hence my assignment to their story. It's a little known fact, outside Garamold at least, that the late Emperor was a devoted patron of the arts who supported various theatre troops to the tune of much coin. Indeed, Solus was so enamored by the majestic players that he ordered the construction of this very airship, and the troop might perform in every corner of the Empire. When his grandson took the throne, however, everything changed. Now all the theater troops, domestic and foreign, must submit their works for approval by the Central Imperial Board of Censors. If a play is deemed vulgar or inflammatory, it's banned, and the troop denied their writ of transit. The worst offenders, well, they ain't never hoid from again. This policy has effectively left playwrights with two options. Either compromise their creative integrity to curry favor with his radiance, or put down their quills altogether. The principle of the majestic, however, chose a thoid option. To express his disapproval for the new emperor's policies obliquely in ostensibly unpolitical works. Pray, forgive me for my earlier outburst. I am Alma Bas Laxentale, daughter of Principal Genemis Sen Laxentale. Perhaps you've heard my father's latest play, The Zodiac Brave Story? On the surface, it is an innocent retelling of a well-known Galian fairy tale, hardly worthy of the censor's attention. But beneath, it is something quite different, a fact that the censors failed to spot when they approved the manuscript for public performance. The play quickly became a huge success. The common folk loved its fantastical story, while the learned classes appreciated its true message. By the time the Imperial Board of Censors realized their mistake, it was too late. 
no longer in a position to prohibit the performance outright without admitting fault, they took aim at the company's poise strings instead. Before long, noble patrons began to withdraw their support, fearing to be associated with the troop. By the end, even the learned felt compelled to feign ignorance. By bleeding the majestic of their funding, the senses robbed them of their voice. And none, <laughs> you know what? None of this has made it any clearer as to why you're here, right? Allow me, Lena. Hey, it's fucking Sid Highwind from FF7. 14, you stupid cunt. I've known Janemis since we were students at the Magitech Academy. When I heard his daughter was in Kugani, looking to enlist the aid of an adventurer, I felt compelled to give her your name. Sorry for not announcing myself sooner, old friend. Janemis and I were from different worlds, but that only served to fuel our friendship. Many were the nights when we'd prattle on in the wee small hours. Warm flagons of peated ale numbing our minds to the other's naive ideologies. Yet, no matter where our conversation began, it would invariably end with him telling me how he was going to change the Empire from the inside out. The troop was to be his path into people's hearts. Even after the Empire forced him from his home, Janimus never gave up hope that his work might change the world. Art will ever strain against artificial bounds and borders, man-made walls and misguided walls. It is in such time of uncertainty that we must needs embrace our calling and take to the skies so that others might do the same. What I'm trying to say, rather poorly I concede, is that not all Garleans are hewn from the same stone. Just as there are those who would pledge their lives to the Empire, who would never think to question the authority of its leaders, there are those like Alma's father and myself, whose love for their country does not blind them to its flaws. Still, try selling that sack of sunflower to an Alamegan or a Doman who's watched his family consumed in the flames of a Magitech Reaper. How many Yotzean adventurers do you think would leap at the opportunity to help an Imperial soldier search for a missing father? and in Galean territory, nonetheless. But you, you're different. You've seen enough to know that the line between good and evil ain't defined by race, color, or creed. So what say you? I say, gotta go fast. Hmm, indeed, Sonic. Yeah. Now that you understand the nature of the task, perhaps Armour could provide some insights as to where we might begin our search. Shortly before my father disappeared, he began work on his next play, a successor to the Zodiac Brave story. Oh, shit. I'm getting ahead of myself. Please, follow me. So, through adventure and hardship, young Delita, a boy of common blood, becomes a hero, culminating in the birth of the mythical kingdom of Ivalis. But, uh, that's where the story ends. There ain't no records of anything that follows. Was Principal Genimus simply gonna invent something? My father believed that he'd discovered evidence of a second hero, one whose efforts went largely unnoticed, but without whom Delita would have never risen to the throne. His was the next tale he wanted to tell. The true Zodiac Brave story. A second hero? 
According to my father's studies, this young man was one of Delita's closest friends and confidants. That is, until the untimely passing of Delita's sister forced the two to part ways. Yet the unnamed hero continued to provide aid to his friend by thwarting the machinations of those who would scheme against Talita, thus paving the way for the pauper's rise to Regent. You must forgive me, but uh, I ain't never heard anyone make such claims. How exactly did your father come by this information? That, well, oh shit, it's a long story. One which begins and ends with Genimus becoming lost in the very legend that he sought to lay bare. Even as far back as our academy days, Ivalus had Genimus firmly in its grasp. He flatly refused to believe the story was just a fairy tale. And so, when he was finally driven out of Garlemald, it was only natural he should choose this more places as his refuge. Was it not, Alma? That's correct, Master Garlond. It's been long since my father's belief that the ruins of ancient Ivalis lie beyond Nagsia, buried beneath the sands of the Dalmasca Desert. Poor Dalmasca. The kingdom prospered in relative isolation for countless generations, until the Empire came calling. When not touring, my father would organize expeditions into Dalmasca Desert to search for proof of Ivalis's existence. Sometimes he would bring back strange artifacts, ancient tomes, and and crystals. Crystals unlike any others. My father called it crystal meth. I'm sorry, my father called them aurasite and claimed that they were vital to proving his theories. This is one such crystal. By the twelve! It's magnificent! Can I smoke it? No, you little drug addict. Evolusian legends tell of crystals bequeathed by the gods and to those who would be kings. It's during his quest to gather Orosite that young Delita rises to prominence. Must have heard the tale a thousand times from my nursemaid, but that's all it ever was, a tale. My father would often tell us how the Orosite spoke to him. At the time, we assumed he was speaking figuratively, or just high off his bloody tits, that the stone's beauty had roused his muse. But then he began to act strangely. How so? Following our arrival here in Hingashi, my father spent most of his time cloistered in his chambers, poring over his past research, and though he was alone, we could often hear him in conversation. It was not uncommon for my father to recite the lines as he wrote them, but it soon became clear that this was something else. It was as if he was talking to my mother, my mother who had passed several winters gone. Might this not have been out of mere loneliness, or perhaps the strain of your flight from Garlemont? Possibly, but that would not explain the voices which answered him. Right, right. Alma, who are these people? I told you, I did not require any help finding father. Especially from outsiders. So good of you to join us, Ramza. Allow me to introduce... Enough, Master said. We may be shunned by the Empire, but we're still Garleans. We still have our pride. Unlike some, it seems. We require neither the aid nor the pity of foreign rabble. Especially not a blue hedgehog like that. Have you forgotten where you are, brother? It's we who are the foreign rabble. This land and its customs are all but unknown to us. We would be fools to conduct our search without a proven guide. Your sister is right, Ramza. As my good blue furry hedgehog friend here, your mistrust is ill-placed. I personally vouch for his character. In all the time that I've known him, he's never once let anything as insignificant as race or creed color his judgment. You're lucky to have him. But we would have you, Master Garland. Why do you refuse us? Because you're right, cunt. You know why. Until this affair with Omega is resolved, my hands are tied. It pains me to refuse you and your sister, but it pains me far more to leave Janimus to his fate. And I'm sorry. 
You need not apologize. And let my emotions get the better of me. After what happened in Ramanastra, it may be time to admit that we're out of our depth. My brother's last expedition met with tragedy in the ruins of the city. He barely escaped with his life. The Empire turned Rabanastra into a death trap. You were a fool to set foot there without proper escort. I realize that now, Master Garland, but at the time, I saw an opportunity to rescue our father, and I took it. Hey, uh, whatever led you to believe that your daddy was in, a uh, Damascus capital? My father's fascination with Ivalishian legends began with a trip to the antediluvian city long before the war. Call it a premonition, but something tells me that that's where he's returned. Now you must excuse me. I need some time to think. Then Alma, I'll leave you and your brother in Sebi's capable hands. He's ever repaid my trust with interest. You do well to grunt him yours. Hey, thank you, Master Garland. We will not forget this kindness. All right, listen up, Sonic, you fucking minge. Damascus is nestled in a forgotten corner of the Empire's outermost territories. I do not foresee any trouble from the standing army, but would suggest committing to memory the locations of each of the barge's exits, just in case. Hey, don't worry, I'm Sonic, okay? I can go fast. As for the flight itself, the currents above Dalmasca are as wild as the land below. You might want to hold on. Forward! I said silently. Are we about to do a light speed jump? What's gonna happen? I'm excited. Wound what? Don't even start. Oh, I thought it was gonna go. And just like shoot off. Oh, this music. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> How good is my Sonic Glam? Just totally ruins the scene. <laughs> just totally ruins the scene. <laughs> oh my god. Just so inappropriately dressed. T Fraser, thank you for thanking him. We'll complete our descent to Rabanastra and the shuttle. Not you, you silly goose. Look at yourself. Oh, Ramsa. I thought I made myself clear, Alma. The capital is simply too dangerous. Father would never forgive me if I were to lose you trying to rescue him. Oh, well, shit. Come, Sonic. We're wasting time. Oh, oh, poo. Oh, fiddlesticks. I'm really upset about this. This is fucking FF12! Ah, oh, this is so mad! Because I didn't like that game. I only played it for like, I don't know, maybe five, ten hours. But I really liked the opening city. This was sick. Oh, this fucking rules! Wait, is it destroyed? Oh, okay. No? Just smoking. Just weird buildings. This is so sick! According to my father, Rabanastra was already a thriving city some thousand years ago. But after performing several private excavations beneath a so-called desert sapphire, my father came to the conclusion that it was not the first settlement to stand here. Then, uh, your father believes that Rabanastra sits atop the royal city of Lasalia, capital of Ivalis. If that's true, that could change history. 
We'd be famous! I'd be walking here. Famous? Are you sure you don't mean rich? <laughs> you plebs are all alike. Parasites grown fat on the sweat and suffering of others. Bold words for a boy of just 16 summers. And what, pray tell, have I done to deserve such spite? I only wish to learn the truth behind the disappearance of the Empire's foremost playwright. If that should lead to something bigger, well then, I'd be the worst reporter in the realm if I didn't pursue it. Oh gosh, well, arguments in English. Arguments in New York. Hmm. Meow? Yes, yes, yeah, so we can argue about this now, or we can return to the Prima Vista and report to our army of adventurers that it's time to begin the expedition. I humbly suggest the latter. Oh, I remember these things. I remember these fucking things. You see, it is as I said, brother. Let them come to us. Should we kill them now? No, time not right. When has that stopped us before? Fool, do you not see that one? Slayer of gods, they call him Warrior of Light. To be off, because they want everyone to see their face, because we're a bunch of vain assholes. That's actually surprising. The actor's like, can I please Jesus wear this? Tentacle. Oh my god, shut the fuck up, boss. I'm trying to talk to chat. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, do what it says? Shit. I get it. I'll be judged. Shut the f- Oh, fuck, I'm a chicken! Help! Help! Oh, god! What the- What the fuck is this? God damn it. Did I just get fantasia Oh, shit. Help! <gasps> oh my gosh! Where... Where am I? Father, Ramza, the warrior of light. Yes, yes, I know you, but that you should come to my rescue. Words fail me. A poor playwright, I must seem. Thank you, warrior of light, for delivering me this fine gift. Now, hand over the orosite, unless you wish to see the desert sands turn red. Be quick, Gijuk here does not have the steadiest of hands. That one, she will bring it to me. <gasps> yeah, but I'm walking here. Do it. Give him the chili dog. Don't. 
Yeah, okay. Um, don't hurt me, Mr. Big Lizard. Ah! Hey, I'm running here. Oh, yes. This is it, Dumar. And to think we found it so close to Dumar. The Dumar of Dumar. <laughs> oh, and now I am dead. Uh, Nanny? Enough, Boagi. We would not have our guests think us underbred. You have what you want, you thieving lizards. Now unhand him. Of course, a banga is always true to his word. I will be keeping this. Father! You've only yourself to blame for this. But if you mislike the thought, you could always blame the gods. Not that they listen. Ga -ga 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 -ga. Get up, fool. We are leaving. He's just fine. He's just fine, man. Oh, that's so mad. They just shoot each other as like a mild punishment. <laughs> Seems funny. They're just so tough. You're going to be all right. Hey, uh, listen. We can't see to your father's hearts here. Come on. Let's get him back to the Prima Vista. <gasps> oh gosh, it's waking up. <clears throat> I'm a Ponce. Alma, Ramza, can you ever forgive me? And you, Sid, it was never my intention to put you to such trouble. I'm ever in your debt. You would have done the same for me, Janibus. Besides, it was Sebi here who went to all the trouble. If anyone deserves your thanks, it's him. Yeah, gotta go fast. He's right. I've done nothing to deserve your kindness, yet I am its beneficiary nonetheless. So, if I understand correctly, you're saying Aura Sight does not work to facilitate the possession of a living host by an icon, as we assumed it to be the case with his sire and the Archbishop, but rather, it absorbs the host's ether, its very soul, somehow transforms it before returning to the host's body. If that's the case, our Charlayan allies need to be informed immediately. I suppose the real question is, did you find what you came looking for? The legend would have us believe that Delita Hyral the commoner who would be king was the sole hero of the Zodiac brave story. But as I've discovered, there was another, two others, in fact, siblings whose roles faded from the subsequent retellings of the story, a brother and sister by the names of Ramza and Alma. Then, 
prepare for this assignment, I poured over every published work on Evolution Legend that I could lay my hands on, and nowhere did I find any mention of these siblings. That's because you're an idiot. No. But I did. I uncovered irrefutable evidence that Delita had a close companion named Ramza who aided him in his rise to power. This in turn led me to Alma. That I might never lose sight of the truth, I named my own children after these lost players. I'm sorry I never told you any of this, Sid, but you must believe me. Ivalus had never been a mere pastime of mine. It is, and forever will be, my calling. My purpose. My family's purpose. Go on. The world knows me as Genimus Sen Lexum Tail, yet that is but my stage name. My true name is Arzalam. Arzalam. I'm sorry, it's complicated. Even I can't pronounce it. It's Arzalam, Durai. Countless generations past, it was my ancestor who penned the Durai papers, an account of Ivalis and the War of the Lions that details what truly occurred during that turbulent era. Nanny? Hmm. You're tired, father. Rest. I will continue. Long ago, an orphan by the name of Oren Durai crossed paths with both Ramza and Delita. After Delita's rise to power, Oran found himself in the service of the pauper become king. Following the War of the Lions, Oran believed that the people of Ivalis had a right to know of the truth of Ramses' involvement, and set about documenting his deeds. When the church learned of his intent, however, they branded him a heretic, and had him burned at the stake. The Durai papers were never published, and any existing copies were gathered and sealed away in church vaults. The truth about Ivalus, along with them. So, uh, what was so damning that it might drive the church to do such a thing? <coughs> I'm coughing, oh gosh. Shouldn't have smoked so many cigarettes. The answer to that question can be found in this book, the only surviving transcript of my ancestor's chronicle copied from an earlier draft and passed down for untold generations. With this, my father and I plan to reveal the truth and restore honor to the family name. Forbidden Chronicles. Secret family legacy. <laughs> Not that I doubt you, Genimus. But how do you expect to convince people of all this when well nigh every soul in the realm believes Ivalus be nothing but a bedtime story. By proving that it's anything but. And when the people see that Ivalis was real, the rest shall fall into place. Were it as simple as bringing forth the Chronicle and submitting it for review, <laughs> we would have done this long ago. But alas, it's not. The Durai papers, you see, are written in high Ivalisian, an ancient tongue long extinct. My father, his father, and his father before him labored tirelessly to decipher this tome, but for want of other sources made only fitful progress. A word here, a phrase there. It wasn't until a recent expedition to Rabanasta turned up several well-preserved artifacts and we were able to translate a small portion of the papers. Then the diary stolen by the Banger Bounty Hunters? I'm afraid so. Everything we'd learned of the language was contained in those. Well, eh, shit. Then we're back to where we started. Not necessarily. We still have the transcript, as well as some few translated passages. And of course, my father's impeccable memory. I've come too far to allow so simple a setback to deter me from my purpose. I'll show the world the truth, if it's the last bloody thing I do. It's as Master Garlon says. He's a man obsessed, and I fear that Ivalus's grip on him will only grow tighter. Father was fortunate to escape Rabanastra with his life, and already he speaks of continuing his quest. You promise me you'll keep him safe, Sonic. 
please. Hmm. Suspicious. 